Recently, unfortunately, in the sport of bodybuilding, many competitors have been unexpectedly passing away. And the questions being brought up, was this a coaching method? Was this some peak week method? Was there something that, you know, was an otherwise being coached that could have caused these things? And a lot of people have been asking me my opinion, and that's what we're talking about today on Gains O'Clock. I'm Ryan Milton from Team Flex. You guys are on my show, Gains O'Clock. Every Friday we get on here and I'm talking to you about how to make gains. We were supposed to be talking about deloads today, but uh, you know we're bringing this topic in instead, talking about some of the recent events um, with unexpected passings of competitors, especially very close to competitions and things like that. People have been asking me the question, and we will get to those deloads another time today. We're going to talk about this, all right? So if you guys are not aware of this, I mean, you're not paying attention to the sport. Sport. This kind of stuff has been going on a long time, but very recently, now that we have so much social media, you know, we have the ability to see so many different things going on, and you know, there's a lot of news outlets, honestly, that are in the sport of bodybuilding reporting on things like this. Um, if you're paying attention, unfortunately, there has been a passing of many competitors recently, you know, that were very close to show, even at their competition, um, you know, and they have unexpectedly passed away, potentially due to coaching methods taking place, you know, in the form of using a lot of performance enhancing drugs, a lot of steroids, um, a lot of diuretics and other, you know, peak weed kind of substances, not to mention just all of the other substances that are out there. People use clenbuterol, T3, all these dangerous compounds that, you know, coaches and these other gurus out there, you know, they come and say that they know what they're doing and they're trying to prescribe these things to people and they're telling them what to do, but, you know, it's just not at all what they should be doing. They're not doctors, they don't have any pharmacology degree, they don't have anything that could make them be able to do that type of practice, and yet there are so many coaches in this sport that you know promote the use of performance enhancing drugs. They put people on all these crazy protocols, and it does take a toll on their body. And you know, recently we have seen now um, with uh, many competitors actually having this happen, just unexpectedly passing away in their peak week or at their show. And uh, people have been asking me, What's my opinion on this? and I want to tell you guys straight straight up. There are so many bad practices in the sport of bodybuilding when it comes to coaching. A lot of people that you know are doing things they should not be doing, putting people on compounds and drugs and all these other things they have no right to be doing. And it's just really, really not something that you should be getting from your coach. Period. You know, it's not something you should be going through. On Team Flex, we do not use these things. Uh, we have never done these types of things. We have never done these types of practices, and we don't encourage that to any degree. You know, I've always said that the best way to compete in this sport is to have a really good training program, really good nutrition program, and do your best, train hard, and continue to do that for a long time. But when you choose to have, you know, these different compounds brought into your training, these different performance enhancing drugs being, you know, given to you by different random people out there, coaches out there, even if they're well-known coaches, I mean, it's still always going to present an inherent risk. And so um, I do believe a lot of these things that happen in the sport, when we see competitors uh, training tragically pass away at a young age or unexpectedly for no other reason, I do believe oftentimes it is very much related to the different performance enhancing drugs and compounds that you're using and you know being given to by coaches. You guys know that I have been a bodybuilding coach for a long time. I've been in the sport a long time. I talk to a lot of coaches all the time, you know, at events or in the gym or wherever I meet them and see them. And I always hear from all these different coaches out there the crazy stuff they're doing to their clients with, you know, these different compounds compounds, these different performance enhancing drugs, insulins, uh, T3, clenbuterols, different steroid compounds, diuretics, all this stuff. It's insane to me. And every time that, you know, I'm talking to them and they're asking, hey, what do you put on your clients? I'm always like, what are you talking about, man? Like we manipulate very few variables and it's usually like, oh, we changed a couple macros here in your peak week, but we're not dehydrating clients. We're not doing diuretics. We're not doing crazy, you know, uh, we don't do any performance enhancing drugs, but we're definitely not encouraging these crazy protocols or anything else that many, many other coaches do. And I just don't believe that it is in the right of any coach to be doing that type of stuff. It's, you know, frankly, it's going to cause serious problems for many people because for everyone that unfortunately passes away, you better believe there's 300, 400, maybe 500 or more clients on that your coach's roster that are going to have some side effects from the stuff they've done, you know, in their career, whether it be permanent organ damage, kidney damage, liver damage, 
other things. I mean, I have, I can tell you guys from my personal experience being at events, uh, I've been to many, many events over the years, many, many competitions. Oftentimes I'm a sponsor, you know, and so I'm able to be there backstage handing out awards. I'm hanging out with all the competitors or I'm coaching. And so I'm backstage helping my competitors. But I've been at shows many times myself where somebody passes out, somebody goes down, they're, they're standing backstage just fine and all of a sudden they're being rushed out on a gurney because, you know, they, they basically were so dehydrated or some kind of compound their coach told them to take has affected them in such a negative way they literally pass out and this is not new information you guys this has been going on unfortunately for a very long time it started to ramp up a lot in the 90s with a lot of the crazy drug protocols that were being put out you know when we kind of got into this mass monster scene of bodybuilding that trickled down and don't think that this video I'm talking about just bodybuilders I mean you know there's a lot a lot of bikini competitors these days using different compounds there's a lot of people obviously in wellness using different compounds there's a lot of women in all divisions using different things and that goes to bodybuilding that goes to men's physique classic physique all these divisions and unfortunately it is um part of the sport that is very very you know it's dangerous and it's not something you should be doing it's not something you should be getting from a coach for sure and you know there are coaches in this sport that you know debatably you could say they have a list of people that unfortunately passed away during peak weeks and during other protocols and during leading up to events and it's likely f because of something that they were taking they, they were told to take by their coach or some other effect you know obviously you'll never know for sure and unfortunately doctors and people that do this kind of studying they don't dive into all these things a lot but you know when you look at the actual you know reports from a lot of these guys and a lot of these women that unfortunately have this happen um, you do see there are similarities between side effects from these drugs and these compounds that they use used and what could have led to their actual cause of death. So this is my opinion, you guys, it's been going on a long time and unfortunately it is going on too long and now it is beginning to spread rampantly where we're seeing this happen too much. This needs to change. These things need to stop happening like this. We need to like not have coaches out there prescribing these types of things and doing these types of things to people. It does tax your body. It does tax your hormones. It does tax your life. Even if you don't actually end up passing away or dying from doing this stuff, you will still be affected and that doesn't have to be part of the sport. I mean, it kind of takes the health side out of even the sport of bodybuilding if we're talking about the fact that you have to do X, Y, and Z and risk your life literally to even compete in it. And let me remind you guys, this is not to be a negative video. This is not to do anything like that. I do believe you can compete naturally. And like, you know, I said, we on Team Flex, we coach naturally. This is the way we do it. We coach with training. We coach with nutrition. We don't push drugs on people. We don't do any of that type of practice. We're not using diuretics. We're not pushing people through crazy protocols in anything in peak week or anything like that ever. And, uh, you know, we have the success we have from doing that. And obviously other people get the other teams, other coaches have their success maybe from doing combinations of that with drugs and things like that. But the truth is either way, you don't need to go down that path. You don't need to go down that rabbit hole. I've always been an advocate for not doing that. And hopefully we're going to see some changes on the grand scale. You guys, one thing I did want to close this video out was um, a post from Jake Wood. Okay. If you guys don't know who Jake Wood is, he is the uh, now new owner of Olympia. He purchased the Olympia some years back now. I'm not exactly sure when that was, but it happened several years ago. And um, he posted about one of the people that have unfortunately passed away recently. And he says that he has spoke with Jim and Tyler Mannion, who are you know the people that own the MPC and the IFBB. Um, and they kind of set the judging criteria to agree, right? And it says... They're sickened by the turn of events that have been happening, and they agree the conditioning is overemphasized in judging criteria, and something must be done. And so basically, he's saying he's going to push for changes in all divisions. Coaches and athletes play their part too. I will not say any more. There may be counterproductive. Criticize me and my organizations as you may. I don't care. What I do care is about greater athlete safety. Okay, and so that's really you know where it's at, guys. Jake Wood coming out saying that he spoke to the people that set this criteria, and hopefully. Hopefully we're going to see a change in that to where they take away some of this crazy, you know, conditioning They take away what has been being maybe scored too much and how conditioning could be overemphasized. And thus coaches are pushing athletes to do X, Y, and Z athletes push themselves to do X, Y, and Z. And that can result in some of these unfortunate events, these unfortunate side effects. And unfortunately people actually losing their life. So that's the perspective I want to give you guys today. As always, I, you know, I don't think that you need to in any way force yourself to do these types of 
practices. I don't think you need to do these things. If you don't understand how to do, you know, a peak week without doing diuretics, you don't understand how to do a peak week or any other part of your training without performance enhancing drugs or any of these other methods or dehydrating yourself or anything else. You know, there's a lot that you can learn about the human body. There's a lot that you can actually learn about the real science behind these things. And most of the time, if you got a guru, you got some guy out there, maybe they have success, maybe they don't, maybe they got lucky, maybe they got a good gene pool of clients, maybe they had some that, you know, did really well, but there's some that also passed away or they had serious side effects. I mean, the truth is a lot of times these gurus, these coaches, these people prescribing these things have zero right to be doing it. They can't do it and they shouldn't be doing it. And they also don't know what they're doing to people. You know, it becomes more about a trophy, more about a medal, more about anything else than the health of their clients, their athletes and anything like that. So it's very unfortunate. You don't need to be doing that. What I do think we need to do as a whole is bring bodybuilding back to the, the center of where it was about enhancing your life. It was about becoming better. It was about having a better body, a better mind, and just becoming a better competitor overall. And I think that's lost. And I think that's becoming more and more lost. And I think we really need to shift that focus and turn this sport back to where the emphasis should be. You know, you train really hard, you eat really well, and you do these things because yeah, you'll do great on stage, but also because it enhances your life. It makes you a better person. That is what the root of bodybuilding was about. And you know, with all these things going on now and the unfortunate passings of many competitors, you know, it's time to start turning this around. So I just wanted to give you guys my opinion. Please make sure you subscribe. We'll be back to our regular schedule programming next week, but we had to jump on here today and talk about that. All right. Thanks for watching. Coach Rye is out.